This here is a Sun F20, which is a, another one of the Sun cards. I recently did a video about a Sun F40 SSD, and this is kind of the baby older brother to the Sun F40. There is also an F80, which is a bigger version of the F40. So this guy is definitely an older design compared to the other two. So we can see it's the same form factor, half height, low prof, um, half height, um, medium length. Um, it still has that LSI HBA under it. This guy happens to have a battery, which I don't know exactly why it needs it, because it's not a RAID card where you'd need a battery to maintain the cache. It might have some small write cache. They say it works, I can't find any evidence of it, and it probably is not truly needed on this one, because I don't find much um, solid state caching on here. Now, it has the same um, thing where the actual SSDs are on these little modules here, which pop right off. These are standard, um, not standard, but they're just SATA SSDs in an interesting form factor. So they work in any system that supports the um, LSI HBAs. So no drivers are installed in pretty much every modern OS. It just You don't need a driver to be installed to use it. Um, Performance-wise, so here's the thing. These are SLC SSDs, which is the only large SLC ones I have. They're 24 gigs each for a total of 96. Um, as also means these will pretty much never die from writes under any reasonable workload. They have eight chips on them, so each chip would be a um, four gigabyte chip, so a total of 32 gigabytes, and they limit it to a usable 24. Um, it has a Marvel controller on it, and that's about it for these little chips. Um, the only other cool feature that this guy has that the other ones don't is it has these SFF8087 connectors. Each one of these can run another four drives or even more with a SAS expander. Uh, so it makes it a nice little solution to add hard drives. Now I think this is only SAS 1, so it's 3 gigabytes per second. So you don't want to be running SSDs off of here. And um, it's, I think it's limited to 2 terabyte hard drives according to the internet, but I've never tested it because I don't have a large enough drive. So that's nice for an inexpensive thing. The other thing, these are relatively cheap. They're about 24 bucks shipped from eBay, which is reasonable for what it is. It's an SSD that's good for caching. IOPS wise, I'll show you the exact numbers, but you're probably thinking in the, depending on Q depth for lower Q depths, you're thinking about 20,000 read and write um, with all of these in RAID 0. And you get the additional drive support, which makes it kind of a neat little card to just put in service if you have the PCI Express slot and run it as a caching drive if you support it. Where a lot of new systems are supporting caching drives, like Storage Spaces has it, ZFS has it. So you might as well get a couple more IOPS for a relatively limited cost. They do use a bit of power, it does run quite toasty. And it's own nice little chips. Let's go look at the performance numbers. I'm gonna do, here's a little bit of testing in Fedora, and then I'll do a bit of testing in Windows as well. And here's a look at the Sun F20 in Linux. So I currently have it on a system that's running Fedora 28. And I was playing around with um, LVM caching. So LVM has a built-in caching thing where essentially you make a um, pool and then you tell it to make a um, logical volume that goes on the hard drives. And then you make a logical volume on the SSD and then you make a metadata on the SSD. And once that's completed, you have a cache. So for comparison, um, I have the data here from just the SSD, about 270 megs per second read. I'm only using a single one, 140 write. And for random IOPS, we're just going to use the big data test at 46 megabit. Um, and just the hard drive, 140 read, 139 write. And we get 0.9 megabit for the random IO test. And with the um, cache, we get... 182 reads, so it's an improvement, yet definitely for sequential reads it's doing both. Then again, most caching software is optimized for um, multiple, for random IOPS, where we do see that 39 megabit, so it's almost getting to full performance. And this brings into the problem of testing any caching configuration as a pain, because what you would see is you see people do exactly what I did here, which is run a benchmark on it, and a caching algorithm is going to cache the relatively small benchmark file, and I'm not really able to run a full workload, or I could, but I don't know exactly which workload to run and how to test, and I'm not going to do that now. Let's go take a look at the peak speeds in Windows now running RAID 0 arrays. So let's look at a bit of benchmarking in Windows now. So I did a 7-zip unzip and recorded the time in seconds, 
With some quite bogus results, we see a 30, a 40 second for the four drive raid, a 37 for a two drive raid, a hard drive doing better, the RAM disk is the fastest, which is probably some caching and maybe a few other variables. Uh, this test has a very bad, um, it's very bad repetition and validity is probably awful. So now let's look at um, Crystal Disk Mark, which is a bit better because disk benchmarks do things like disabling system cache to get results. So looking at all the drives, on the top left we have an Intel S3500, which is the boot drive. It's just a, it's a bit older, SATA SSD. We see 500 megs set. The writes are pretty low in these S3500s. Now we have a single 24 gig um, module where we see writes are quite bad on it, but not awful compared to that. Um, SOC is definitely helping there. Um, and looking at it, the read speeds are quite bad, the max. And that's probably limited to the SATA 3 gigabit limitation. Moving down, we see the 2 terabyte hard drive on the right. Quite good sequential speeds, uh, especially for a 5900 RPM drive. But those random speeds are just awful. And on the left, we got four of them in RAID 0. Which is quite nice, actually. Um, we're getting over a thousand megs per second read and over 500 write. That's faster than almost any SATA SSD. The problem is the random I.O. isn't much better. Because, uh, especially at low Q depths, at these low Q depths 4K, you can't really do much. At high Q depths, it does a good amount better. Because you can kind of spread it out between the drives better. So now for fun, we're going to start playing around with some SSD caching and some other stuff in Windows. But that's pretty much the main result. Performance is a heck of a lot better than any hard drive would ever be, but not great for an SSD. Um, this whole thing about SLC being like super fast and stuff, it's technically faster, yeah, but as drives get newer, the newer standards are going to be faster. So a modern TLC drive is pretty much better in every way compared to these MLCs, except for some intrinsic MLC SLC advantages, such as the, the write speeds is always going to be that 135 megabytes per second. Unlike TLC drives, where they almost all have a, a simulated SLC cache. So, don't buy these for performance setting records, but it's not awful. So, on my quest of testing all the different cache software, I came across something called eBooster. It's supposed to be paid. Um, I didn't pay for it. This is a free trial, and it's really not great. So, it doesn't tell you a ton of info, but basically it only caches your C drive. Also, the interesting thing is it seems to be a file level cache and not a block level cache, which generally, and it does not want to show the list because it's currently out of trial time. But it shows a list of all the files it's caching, and what it looks like it's almost doing, yet probably a bit smarter, is basically just copying and pasting files and then making links for the real ones. Which I guess does work, but, you know, it's kind of hodgepodge, and by looking at the performance numbers when it was running, is not doing much, and that's with RAM enabled, so the algorithm either is inefficient, or I'm not testing it right, or something, something. It's also pretty old, it looks like it was designed when 64-bit OS's were new and cool. So, that's about it for now, this is an interesting drive or device. Uh, if you don't mind the 2TB limit, and you want some SSDs for caching, it's a great HBA, as it costs about the same as a standard H310. Be warned about the 2 terabyte limit, and just know these are not the fastest SSDs on the market, but other than that, it's a fun little drive to play with, especially at the price if you just like playing with cheap drives.